Hi, welcome back to the Woodshop Nerdery. In this video, I continue the project build series for the Hans Wenger JH512 folding chair build. This will be the fifth video in the series, and I expect there'll probably be two more. Hopefully not more than that. This is a very complicated project, and there's just a ton of steps to share with you all. I've got some really interesting things to show you in this video, including a really unique use case for the ShopSmith horizontal boring function, so please check it out. This homemade rasp has turned out to be the perfect tool to sand out these thin slots. It's just a tongue depressor sized paint stirrer with a fragment of cloth back bell sander abrasive super glued right on there. And I can get it right in that thin slot. And do all the sanding I need. There's no way any of my other files would have fit in here. I have the mortises cut out to connect my rails to my side legs. Now I need to cut out the tenons. I've carefully marked the location and size of the tenon on each workpiece, uh, but because these are such unusual shapes, I think I'm going to use my bandsaw and just get as close to the line as I possibly can. And then I'll take it down the final size and shape with chisels and rasps and other hand tools and custom fit each tenon to each mortise. On this one piece, I made a mistake when I rough cut the tenons on the bandsaw. I wanted to leave the tenon fat so I could take my rasps and chisels and pare it down to the correct size, all the while checking it with my test mortise until I've got it right. I'd intended to cut the tenons right on the line on the back and then leave it fat on the front so that I was always referencing the same surface and the design when sizing it down. That way the tenon wouldn't walk back and forth from piece to piece. But what I did is I cut it on the line on the front and then left it fat on the back, which isn't going to work. So now I need to thicken up this tenon so it isn't loose. So I just cut some shims on the bandsaw. Now I'm going to glue them on.
clamp them up here with the world's cutest clamps. So I'll leave this to dry overnight and tomorrow I'll be ready to size that tenon. Okay, it's been overnight. So I can remove the clamps and get back to work on this piece. So now the tenon's fitting pretty well. I've got to make some adjustments to this shoulder. That's the next step. Honestly, I'd much rather be cutting these tenons on the table saw, but because of the shape of this piece, there's really nothing to square off of except in this direction, which doesn't help much.
doing, I'm doing my best to undercut this shoulder. It's not always working out the way I want it to, but I'm doing my best. And the reason I keep turning the workpiece is because I want to be chiseling into the bench, not to the side, because it'll just push the workpiece, because it'll just push the workpiece side to side in the vise. Okay, so not exactly happy with this. It's kind of hard to see because of the shadow anyway. But we're not super tight here. I'd like it to be tighter. But, it, but I'm getting better and I think this is the best I can do for now with the skills I have. I now need to move on and work on this whalebone type support brace. I'll be connecting these styles, for the lack of a better term, with the rails using two dowels in each spot. But it's all sorts of weird angles and shapes. I don't have any good way to register like a dowel drilling jig or, or anything like that. So I've got to come up with kind of a creative solution. And this is what I'm going to try. I went back to the computer and on my template I went ahead and added two continuous lines to the pattern that will represent the center point of where I need to drill the dowels and then I've done some marking here for further reference. And I'm going to drill the dowel holes using the Shopsmith horizontal boring function. In order to do that I'm going to use this jig which I've got the Shopsmith T-nuts attached to and two toggle clamps. Of course I'll have to reposition the toggle clamps for the different pieces. Let me show you how that's going to work. So I'll be using the sliding T-nuts to affix it to this miter slot. So now I tighten down the screws to pull those T-nuts tight and now this board is firmly clamped to the table. So now I'll bring in my workpiece with the paper template and start to eyeball alignment with the drill bit. When I think I'm close, I'll look straight over top of it, focus on that point of the brad point bit, extend the quill. So there it seems like the, pit, the tip is exactly over the line. And if I slowly retract it, it should trace the line, but it didn't. So that tells me I got a nudge. Well, maybe it could go a little more. I think that's perfect. So I'll lock down that second toggle clamp. Now I want to set the depth. I think roughly 20 millimeters should be good enough. So I'll extend the quill to that point. Zero out my scale. Now that's a repeatable depth on all of these. So I'm going to raise the table, eyeballing the middle, and then set my stop collar so that I can raise and lower the table and return back to the exact same height on every workpiece. That way my dowels will line up.
I know that seems like a lot of steps, but uh, I think for the accuracy and quality I'm getting here, it's worth it. I have all four of my styles done, so now I need to do these rail pieces. And I'll do these the same way, except I've repositioned the toggle clamps. to start the glue up of the first piece here. I'm going to start with sizing the end grain since I am making an end grain to long grain joint. I dry fitted it but I did not dry fit it with the dowels. Might be a mad scramble here in a second. Yeah, because these splay out. Huh. This is going to be interesting. This is something I did not consider in my design. Oh, there's enough play that it will work. Whew, got lucky. good. It's like they say, sometimes it's better to be lucky than it is to be good. Okay, so I'm really happy with how these turned out. Obviously, I've got a lot of shaping yet to do. Being able to get these dowels drilled accurately has made this super rigid frame, which is good because the way that the chair is designed is that piece basically supports the body weight when the chair is folded out. So it's one of these furniture design pieces that has a specific form, but also has to be super functional. I'll go ahead and let that clip of shaping that chair component with the spoke shave play off to the side. And I'll just give you an update here at the end of the video. So here's a chair bottom and here's a chair back. And I've got all the mortise and tenons cut on all of these. Here's one dry fitted up. I haven't done any of the rounding or shaping to make these smooth and nice to touch and, and comfortable to sit on, but I'll get to that. I have done it on these components, except for the bottoms here. I left it square because I still have to cut that mortise to fit the brass hinge. And once I get that mortise cut, then I'll round off the edges. But I want to keep this edge square to this face for registering the cut of the mortise. So the project is really coming along here. I'm finally making good progress. And in the next video, this stuff will come in handy. This is Mohawk's two-part epoxy because I have some mistakes to correct in these work pieces. So that does it for this Woodshop Nerdery video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.